guys, so we arrived in London. We're actually in the car right now. We're driving because Air Canada lost my luggage. So I'm getting ready to go shopping. Um, a dynamic young woman picked us up. Her name is Nomad Speaks. She's actually a local poet, a mother of four. So we're sitting in her car and I thought we could chat with her while we're driving to go get some clothes because Air Canada lost my luggage. I have no clothes in London. I can't believe this. So Nomad, thank you so much for picking us up, girl. We're just driving with you. I'm excited that like, you know, we we we'll get a little tour of uh, East London. <laughs> yep. This is kind of interesting. We're driving and uh, the camera might shake a little bit. So this is our first official drive vlog in London. So um, your mom of four, yeah. Nomad, should I call you Nomad Speaks? Yes. So what's your other real name? I'm Yasmin. <laughs> Yasmin, yeah. okay. Yasmin, you're on Instagram. We found you on Instagram actually, it's kind of yep. cool. So you basically are mom of four, you're yep. a poet. And like, how do you do it? Like, I don't get it. I can't, I can't even handle having two kids. I know, it's not easy. Like, I'm a writer, so um, I suppose I can work from home. Once they're in bed, I can do me. But I told you, I'm a sucker for a routine. It's very military style. Every hour is calculated. So when did you start doing your poetry? So I started writing when I was 13. Um, it was a way of expressing myself. Because I was always told that I don't actually talk about my feelings. So I used to write it down. So it became a form of therapy almost. So um, earlier when we actually, when I met you earlier, you were telling me there was a time in your life where you had um, writer's block. Yeah. What happened? My father passed away um, eight years ago and I just could not put pen to paper. I found it incredibly hard to write anything. I couldn't even sort of speak about my emotion. You know, in our culture, it's like you have those three days in our religion, you have those three days to mourn and then you're supposed to get over it which is really sad and I think I never actually I still haven't gotten over it and um, after I had my daughter my fourth child it just sort of started flowing out of me it's like I held it in for eight years and I'm grateful for that because the collection that I have now speaks about everything that I am that's powerful um, so literally like you are part of this collective of women that are doing this event this is amazing like so one more night guys we're gonna be having a night of inspiration in London I'm so excited because we hardly get to see Somali women in the new generation um, engaging in such inspiration so no matter why do you think that that's so important I think it's important to show our youth that yes we are here and we can we have a voice and also I think it's important to show our elders that we can pick up from where they left off. I think the civil war, we took a blow. I think not just economically, but I think morally, like our, we were, our hearts were destroyed. And I believe by holding, hosting events such as these will empower women, will motivate women, and it will inspire our youth to go after their dreams, whatever they are. So this is really interesting. Like I'm so like impressed that girls in London have so many kids and they have all these passions. Like what are some of the challenges they're facing? I think if anything, it's probably time management, juggling motherhood and maybe their career career choice. Um, I sort of have found a happy medium where I've got my husband who supports me, my family who support me. So whenever I've got any events to do or anything, they're there to help me out looking after them because I wouldn't want to leave them with just anybody else especially since um, Maya she's only one so I need her to be really looked after otherwise I'd feel guilty it's like what am I doing this for if not for them and their comfort so time management is one of the challenges what um what other challenges are you facing that you found other girls are talking about I think it's sad. Um, some other girls, um, and not many, but some talk about other women not supporting them, which I find really sad because it's she's your sister, fellow Somali sister, fellow Muslim sister. Just support her. You don't have to particularly be into what she's into, but just be there for her and show her that, yes, I see you, I hear you, and I support you. I think it's important that we do that. And I think for my daughter's sake i support everybody honestly i do i just feel like sometimes we're not as supportive of each other as we should be and it's really sad yeah that's interesting so this is like a new kind of template we're doing which is like motivational speaking for women um in our communities do you think that this could be something that really can take off Oh, absolutely. I think that there's so many women within our community who, for example, you know, suffer in silence. 
let's take it to the negative first. Um, things like maybe domestic violence. These things exist, these things are real, and because we're Somali, it doesn't mean we're not experiencing them. So I feel like when you put a voice to something or behind somebody, and that's what I try to do with my poetry. I try to give people who don't have a voice, a voice. Things that they would not necessarily say out loud, I will say it for them. And it's very unfortunate that um, women go through that from all cultures, it's really unfortunate. Do you wanna share a little bit of your piece with us? I know you're gonna to perform tomorrow night, which is exciting. I'll give you this bit. Um, sister, don't go back to paranoia and name calling, heavy footsteps in the corridor, your heart beating and fearing his wrath as he opens that bedroom door, for he will never change. He took the soul of beauty and made it believe it was unattractive to the point where you could not face yourself in the mirror. All by him, you blamed yourself for the different shades of black, blue and purple. Listen, sister, come out of the darkness, come into the light. Wow, I can't wait to hear the rest of it. So yeah. we're gonna drive now to the mall and we're gonna get ready for our day, get some outfits and tomorrow is the show time. So guys, welcome to London. We're driving through. Join us on the sights and sounds of London. <laughs> Welcome to Integration TV live from London, UK. This is the city with the largest Somali diaspora and I'm here tonight for the first time being part of an event that is the first motivational speaking event for Somali women where over hundreds of women are here tonight to be encouraged, inspired and motivated to live better lives. And the best part is this is put together by a group of volunteers. I mean, this is women coming together, deciding to take charge of their destiny in their communities. And I'm here to shed some positive light on the work they're doing, the Somali integration. And this is the first event they put together to bring people like me from around the world to inspire women and to share our stories of struggle and how we overcame, how we built our businesses. And so check out the highlights. Here we go. Where we are now is um, we've got all the stalls here. We have all types of stalls. So we have things like mugmad, really traditional. We've got abayas and hijabs. We've got um, products, homemade products. So many things. Cakes, Mimi's treats is here. Alhamdulillah, so much. So you excited for the night? Completely, yes. Can't wait, inshallah. What, is, what does this moment mean for you? Oh, I mean so much, alhamdulillah. In the sense that it's having setting a goal, actually visualizing what you want, understanding what the aim is, and then actually when it's starting to come true like this, it's amazing, alhamdulillah. You know what I love is walking around and seeing all these girls dressed so modest. Like, I'll be honest with you, I didn't know there's so much choices and modesty wear. But um, tell me, what do you love about this event? Okay, we get to um, discover new things and we're able to like meet with people and open, like, open our views to stuff, to like things. For example, there's like clothing, traditional clothing, and I wasn't really that into traditional clothing, but looking at it now, I can see that they're so beautiful, and I'm really interested in it now. So wow. I might just go and purchase some so myself. You, so you like your bodies now? Of course, I love them. <laughs> um, I love seeing like loads of Somali girls that actually I can relate to, and that, do you know what? Somalis are really beautiful, mashallah. What do you think you want from this event tonight? Um, to be able to take uh, this memory of actually being here and interacting with new people, networking with different people. Okay guys, you know what I love is the diversity of women here. I saw you walk in, I was like, I gotta talk to this girl. She looks so happy, excited. Why are you here tonight? To get motivated. To get motivated? Well, but you look so motivated already. I. Well, you can never be too motivated. I came in to get inspired, look at my people, see the businesses about, support, support our people. So what do you do for a living? Are you a student? I'm a lawyer. You're a lawyer? Oh my God! No wonder she's so inspired. I'm so proud of you. What kind of lawyer? Commercial. Wow. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, honestly, I'm. You don't know how happy I'm right now. I think I'm the only person who gets excited about Somali success. <laughs> 
I'm so proud of you, mashallah. You. Your parents must be too? Yeah, they are very proud, mashallah. How many years have you been practicing? Three now, three years. So newly. This is unreal. <laughs> Hello, can we get a, a shout out? Tell us your name because people have hey, to know. Aiden. Khadija. What is it? Khadija Aden. Wow. Okay, Khadija Aden. She practices law in the UK, in London, yeah. commercial law. Yeah. Hello, Somali woman <laughs> success. And look at her, youthful, beautiful, and glowing and happy. Welcome, sister. Thank you. Integration <laughs> TV. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, guys, between the selfies, the Facebook Lives, the Snapchats, the Instagram, the Twitter, I can't keep up. Somali social media is on fire tonight here. So many people, so many women are here engaging, loving each other. And you know what I love? They're empowering each other. So I'm always loving to meet Somali social media friends. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. <laughs> OK, no shade, OK? <laughs> no shade, Robin. Oh my god. Um, how do you pronounce your name on social media? Tasmin Eamon. Tasmin Eamon. Yes. OK, so you and I have been friends on Somali social media yeah, for, for six years. Oh my God! Yeah, I haven't been on that long, have no, I? No, is it five? Four months? years. Yeah. Four years. Okay. Yeah. I started four years yeah. ago. Okay. Oh wow! So four years we've been friends. Yes. Sometimes you threw shade at me. You know how it is. <laughs> I recently deleted you. Just kidding. <laughs> well, now you would never delete me. Look no. at me. Can you delete this face? <laughs> You know what I love is the fact that like we follow so many different kinds of people yeah, yeah. and social media is all about engaging, right? Yeah, yeah. And then when you meet each other, you already know each other. So it's like, I know you, but I think Wallah is an amazing thing because it connects people like Somalis all over the world. So yeah, it's a, you know, it's a good platform, especially for you guys that are doing something. Yeah, like, um, I love your stories. Like I read some of your posts I and know. such positive quotes yeah. and you know, I, I also know like you're a mom. So tell me about that journey. Like, you know what? I no one gives you a menu, you know, a memo. So we just try to do what we can. Live from London. Integration <laughs> TV, live from London. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So as a young Somali woman, I decided at the age of 17 that I wasn't going to study further and that I wasn't going to work. So my mum put my bags outside the door. <laughs> you know, she had a shoe and a bag packed for me. And she said, Naba, <laughs> which means get out. So I went out and I found myself a job, which was quite an unusual job. I joined a shipping company and became the first Somali woman to become a seafarer. <laughs> now you didn't expect that, did you? <laughs> so, why did I go to sea? It's because my father used to bring back a lot of souvenirs for us as children. And I always used to wonder where these things came from. So I decided that I was going to get on a big tanker and that I was going to study engineering. Because my father always believed that if you were going to do something, you did it like a soldier. Yes. So he said, you can't be painting the decks of ships. Yeah, you have to have a qualification. Mm -hmm. So I did. I studied marine engineering and I traveled around the world. I got married very young and I got divorced very quickly. <laughs> which is the story of our lives. So, with that, after my marriage, and still going to sea, I decided that the marriage wasn't for me. But I did have a baby girl. Aww. And I was very lucky tonight because someone said to me, Asha's mom. And I felt so proud. <laughs> so, I can't raise Asha and go to sea. So my father told my mother she had to support me and raise my daughter with me. So I went off to sea, and I decided that my daughter was going to be very different from me. Yeah? All my money I saved hard, and I sent her to private schools. I decided that not only would she be Somali, but she'll be on top of the world one day. Yes. And alhamdulillah, today, in next, next Wednesday, she'll be 18, and she is achieving her goals. She speaks Somali fluently. She believes in herself, and I think my, her grandfather would be very proud today. But in saying that, my life changed a lot. I came off the ships, 
I had to become a mother when she started school. And I had to show her that I was a role model, just like my mom did to me. So I had to study again. So this time I studied business and finance because I knew I wanted money. <laughs> yeah, girl without money, no job. So I decided that I was going to be a businesswoman, and I did. I successfully created several businesses, but the one that I'm very proud today, after I remarried 10 years ago, is the one that my husband, my children, and I have put together as a family. And that is a logistics company. It's just like DHL, TNT, or any other logistics company, but it's owned by a Somali family. And what we do is we do all the lovely Amazon deliveries that you get. So the more you order, the more money I make. <laughs> Order from Amazon. The Somali community has to support it now. <laughs> so, how do we? How did we get there? I think my husband also is born here, and I think it's very important for me to tell you today that we have a lot of lovely brothers. Yeah, but the most important thing to remember is it's not who you marry; it's what the person you marry believes in. And as long as that person believes in Allah, nothing can go wrong. Um, I want to welcome our next speaker. I actually had the pleasure of talking to her via speakerphone on a car yesterday, which was kind of interesting. Um, and you know, one of the things that I realized is that sometimes when you realize what you're seeking in life is always seeking you, you will have life figured out so easily. Um, I want to welcome her because she shared a beautiful story in the car and I'm sure she's going to share it with you. But I have this thing called, you know, I always joke around with people and say, Somalia used to be called the nation of poets. Well, we're the nation of single mothers now, okay? <laughs> hello, can I get a hello? I know, it's funny, right? Okay, so the nation of single mothers, I'm happy to welcome this amazing woman because you know what she taught me yesterday, just talking to her five minutes? we can become more than the titles that are placed on us. Please welcome Counselor Amina Ali. She's more than a single mother. Hello. Thank you. Um, I obviously got married and moved to Canada because I married a Somali Canadian. And um, yeah, it was an interesting time. I got there. <laughs> I love Canada, by the way, it's a lovely country. Uh, <laughs> but sadly, sometimes when you have memories, you know, you forget about how beautiful the country is. So I got married, and I think my mother was quite relieved. It was like, alhamdulillah, it's a Somali. <laughs> we don't care if you, you know, don't cut a runner here, it doesn't matter. He's a Somali. <laughs> but I think to myself, you know, what do I want to be remembered for? And I don't want to be remembered for just being a single mother. I want to be remembered for somebody who tried to help other women and made sure that her daughter and her daughter's generation had a legacy because I crossed a bridge other women had, um, had crossed before me and I want to make sure that my daughter and the next generation of Somalis um, are able to follow in our footsteps and do better than we've done. But she vowed to never say goodbye and again she invokes the strength of those before her. She takes solace in the fact that she is her mother's daughter. Wow, um, where do I start? Like honestly, I'm, subhanAllah, like, I'm so excited that London is the city that we're kicking off this amazing, what I call revolutionizing Somali culture. This is a revolution where we finally start looking at the way we build ourselves, how we change ourselves, and what tools do we, do we use for the next generation. Because I don't know about you, I'm a mother, and I know what it takes when I look at my two boys and I look at what kind of future are they going to have. You know, there's so many things that our parents, um, God bless them, they did the best they could in this part of the world to help us um, identify with the culture that we're new to. Um, but there's so many things that as moms now, as a new generation of moms, that we have to teach our children so that we enable them to succeed in this society not just in terms of this world, but inshallah in the next world. And that's the most important work that we're doing as mothers. And if you're not a mother yet, I commend you for being here because guess what? 
we all can start learning these simple tools. When was the last time you had someone tell you, I believe in you? Can I hear you say those words? I don't think you believe in me. Like, come on. <laughs> that wasn't very convincing. Let me really hear you say it in your heart. I believe in you. Oh, man, come on. Ladies. OK, I think we have to stand up. You know, when I started um, learning how to do television presentations, I had to stand up and hold my stomach and basically learn how to project my voice. Because a lot of times, as women, we have these insecurities about owning our voice. So I want you to stand up right now. Stand up right now. Stand up right now. We all need a little exercise anyway, because I haven't worked out since I've been here. You know what I mean, right? It actually is a funny thing. When I started wearing a bias, I realized how easy it is to gain weight. So <laughs> y'all better be working out in the treadmills, OK? OK, so I want you to put your hand on your stomach and breathe in and say, I believe in you. I believe in you. <laughs> Do you see how much different that is? One more time. A new one. I support you. I support you. You make me proud. You make me proud. I'm so happy to have you in my life. I love it. Give yourselves a round of applause. Do you, do you notice the power of words? Please tell me that at that moment, I know you guys are excited right now, right? Everybody wants to party now. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. I know. I believe in you guys, too. So let's settle down so we can really enjoy this message because one of the things that I believe is that whenever you're somewhere in this world, whenever you meet people, there's always a divine reason for everything that happens. So if we start taking advantage of our meetings of other human beings, if we start connecting with people, if we start seeing that our lives, our lives, your lives, our children's lives are valuable, it changes the language that we use every day. Just by telling your children, I believe in you, do you know how much that empowers them? Do you know how much that changes the chemistry of their mind, the chemistry of their heart? They're not going to look for that validation from other people. They're not going to seek that from other means of society. If we are the first teachers of our children, and if we start seeing the value that we bring just by telling them, I believe in you. You're awesome. I'm so proud you're my, in my family. You made a good choice today. You are the reason why I'm happy today. Just imagine that. You know, I know for myself, um, one of the things that I had to learn when I first started doing this type of work was, if you don't watch how you behave, your talent will take you places that your character cannot keep you. Isn't that powerful? Your talent will take you places that your character cannot keep you. <laughs> so inshallah, like I said to you, leave here tonight knowing that your life matters. And it may not matter to the people right next to you. You know, if, I always say, if you're, if you're feeling bad or you have low self-esteem, check the people you're around first. <laughs> make sure you're not around some jerks. Because sometimes the people around us will make us believe we're not good, that we're not worthy. You know, we don't have to fight for our worth. You are worthy enough as a woman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us already enough powers. You know, think about all the powers that already we have as women. Okay? If all the women in the world stopped, like, you know, sleeping with their husbands, what would happen? <laughs> Hello? Just kidding. But anyways, we have enough powers. I know that's funny, right? Listen, you guys have enough powers and wills to do anything you want in your life. So get off your butts right now. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Let's shake off the hands. Shake it up. Shake it up. Now, now we're going to finish off what we started with because I think now you guys can know how to project your voices and you know how to use your voice for power, okay? I want to hear the best 
I believe in you. So let's go. I believe in you. Let's hear it again. Come on.